Recently, I received an email from an old high school friend. I'll call Charles. Charles wrote, Dear Warren, I'm sure you remember Paul, and I'm sure you remember his nickname, Bugs. Well, Paul is dead, and I refuse to call him Bugs. You left town after high school, so I don't know if you were aware that Paul had become a world-famous entomologist. His specialty was flying insects. Well, Paul certainly lived his passion and never lost his inquisitiveness. And in the end, it killed him. Our area, the Golden Horseshoe, experienced an infestation of large moths. We went to bed on a normal spring evening only to wake up to everything covered with moths. Covered doesn't actually cover the reality of the situation. We woke up to darkness or at least a murky twilight, even though it was early spring when the sun rises at 5.30 in the morning. The reason for this was the moths who, who covered every window and opening like a gossamer veil. When you open the front door, it was to find a carpet of moths several inches deep, like newly fallen snow. Some of them were still alive, but most were dead. And when you went outside, it was like walking on a carpet of living, squirming flesh, which stank to high heaven when you stepped in it. Stepped on it. You had to brush them off the windows of your car like they were snow and they were slick under your tires. Everything was in chaos. Traffic along the Queen Elizabeth was moving at a crawl while the waters of the creek, which, as you know, is really a river, was clogged with dead moths. And then there were the dead animals. Wild things. Birds. Squirrels. Rabbits, pets like dogs and cats, and farm animals, sheep and cows, even llamas, all dead, suffocated. But, and, and this was far more sinister, many had had the blood drained from their bodies. Three nights in, Paul was called in to investigate, and I was totally surprised to find him on my doorstep at six one morning, surrounded by a halo of moths. After fighting his way in, Paul stared at me with bloodshot eyes and said, Have you got anything to drink? I was shocked. Paul, as a general rule, wasn't a drinker. But I led him into the kitchen, where he poured himself a double vodka, following it with another, as I watched in silence. When he had finished, he said, I'm sorry to come barging in so early, <laughs> and drinking too, but I had to tell somebody, somebody, in case I don't make it. The moths, I asked, confused. But surely you wear protective equipment. Yeah, which protects against moths. But what else is there? I was totally confused, but I could see Paul was frightened, badly frightened. Let me start at the beginning, he said, still fighting for control. We knew the moths only began appearing at night, after the rising of the moon, as if its light was a signal to them, and that they died after sunrise, when they had already worked their evil. So we knew when, but we didn't know where they were coming from. So myself and a group of grad students took to our vehicles and covered the golden horseshoe, looking for the epicenter of the plague. During the day, we surveyed, looking for the places with the greatest number of dead moths to see if that would provide any clue as to their source. One truly weird thing was the moths themselves. Death head moths, so-called because of the skull-like markings on their backs. You know, the ones that appear in Bram Stoker's Dracula, in one of the scenes with Renfield, they aren't native to North America, but are usually found in Europe or the British Isles. So where were they coming from? 
For three nights we drove all night, chasing the infestation. But finally I located Ground Zero, and you won't believe where it was. Of course, I had no idea where the center of this plague could have been. With millions of moths fluttering through the darkness at night, leaving millions of corpses on the ground, I didn't know how Paul or anyone else could find the right spot, but his answer still managed to shock me. The epicenter was the old silo off the fourth line, the old silo where we used to party so many years ago. Paul had driven into the field. He had a vehicle with a four-wheel drive and bumped and rutted his way out to the remains of the old farm, the foundation and the crumbling silo. Paul continued, A cloud of huge moths were buffeting and rocketing my four-wheel drive, which is a heavy vehicle, and it was becoming harder and harder to see. But then suddenly it seemed to grow lighter, like light reflected off snow. And then he was there. He? A tall, thin figure of a man, wrapped up in a black cloak. He seemed to be in the midst of the swirling moths. But there was a clear space around him, as if he was in a bubble. I rolled up to him and threw open the passenger door, as the man was in imminent danger. And then I, I don't really remember what happened. I remember red, 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 and then I woke up. And dawn was breaking, and I was alone, and parked by the silo, the car covered in moths, and, and, can you make me something to eat? I feel so weak, and I'm so hungry, hungry. I made Paul bacon and eggs, which he washed down with a Bloody Mary, several Bloody Marys, and at least eight slices of rye toast. I watched him in amazement. He ate like he had never seen food before. But he had barely finished eating before he collapsed with exhaustion, and I had to put him to bed in my spare room. It was night, and the moths were back when Paul woke up. Woke up and told me he was going back to the silo. I tried to dissuade him, as he was clearly ill, but he was insistent. I have to confront him, he said. Who? The figure at the silo. Surely that was just your imagination, I said. I wish it was, he answered, smiling grimly. I offered to go with him, but he refused, citing a danger he couldn't or wouldn't explain. Instead, he handed me an envelope. Open this if anything bad happens. Something bad happened. They found Paul under a mound of dead moths, lying on the ground by his four-wheel drive, which was parked next to the silo. The moths had suffocated him, which was horrible enough. But then the forensic examination revealed that his body had been drained of blood, just like the dead animals which had been found earlier. The infestation suddenly ended. It was as if the moths, the moths or something else, were satisfied once they had claimed a human victim. I remembered the envelope and opened it. I read, In Bram Stoker's novel Dracula, in one of the sections of Dr. Seward's diary, Renfield tells Van Helsing, that Dracula sends him big moths with skull and crossbones on their backs for him to eat, moths which Van Helsing identifies as the death head moth. And at an earlier point in the book, Van Helsing explains that vampires like Dracula can command the meaner creatures, such as moths, an infestation of death head moths, and animals found with the blood drained from their bodies. Is it the work of a vampire? That is why I must confront him. 
Wish me luck and share this note with the appropriate individuals. Charles finished his email by saying, I don't know what to think about this. I can't credit the existence of vampires. But look at how Paul met his end. Later, I received another email from Charles. It was very short. Found a moth in the house tonight. A death's head moth. I went to look outside to see if the moths were back, only to see a man standing under a street light, looking up at the house. The man was Paul. Paul. I, I've tried to get in touch with Charles, but my emails keep bouncing. And I, when I call, the, the phone just keeps ringing. And tonight I, I found a moth in my bedroom. A death's head moth and and I'm 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 too afraid to look out the window thank you so much for listening if this is your first visit to my channel please consider subscribing my name is Warren and I write and tell original ghost stories and original horror stories about cryptids such as the night floaters werewolves, and the black-eyed children. Till midnight, cheers. You know, it's not really a good thing to uh, tell a horror story about moths when you have trouble pronouncing the word. Yikes. The horror. The horror. <laughs>